Welcome to today's podcast. We want to explore times of transition, which are inevitable for every leader. Today, we're going to explore preparation for that transition, challenges in that transition, and even surprises in that transition, which happen in every organization and for most leaders in those organizations. At Initiative One, we're igniting a leadership revolution by helping organizations eliminate the drama, improve decision-making, and win as a team. Join Dr. Fred Johnson on the Leadership Initiative podcast as we uncover insights to maximize your impact and transform your life. Hi, welcome back to the Leadership Initiative. My name is Tracy Johnson. I'm the CEO at Initiative One. Today, I'm joined by Greg Salmon from Stevenson National Bank. He's the CEO and president, and he has taken over a new role as of January 2024, so about three months in his new role. And today, we're going to talk about transitions, transitions in the organization and transitions as a leader, which we've all experienced in our careers and in our organizations. So welcome, Greg. Thank you. I appreciate being here. Tell us a little bit about your background, Greg, and how long you've been with the bank and, you know, just a little bit about yourself. So I had been at the bank 22 years before this transition, and I'd been leading a division of the bank during that time. And one of the cool stories about our bank is that I'm just the 11th leader of the bank in its 150-year history. Incredible. That's just incredible. 11th leader in 150 years. So transitions at Stevenson don't happen often at the top. Right. And they're typically well planned out. And so this one, for example, was formally announced three full years before the transition happened. Wow. So that's succession planning, everyone. That is that is how you prepare your organization and the team. And I'm confident that what we're going to talk about today, Greg, there's been some surprises <laughs> and some um, planned out things that have gone really well. And All of those details, those nitty gritty details about going through that type of transition. So today, let's dive into that and let's talk about what is it, what is it, you know, what are the, what are the learnings that you have had um, that you're willing to share with us that as you coming in, being a very strong leader and, and leaving, uh, leading a team, not leaving a team, leading a team that is a strong team, what have been some of the things that Um, you have had to learn as you've made that transition? I think the first thing is that just because you've done a good job leading one part of a company doesn't mean you automatically have the full trust of everyone else to lead their teams or lead the leaders of their teams going forward. And so those are all relationships that you have to build. Um, You are going from a coworker or a colleague to being the leader of that individual. And then their team is looking at them to see how they're going to respond to their new leader. Um, So even in the best transitions that are laid out this far in advance, there are still all of those challenges that you need to be aware of and plan for and communicate through them. So you're describing, we we would talk about um, their leadership ladder and Level one leadership is zero trust with your team. And and it means that you have a position in title. You hold a position in title. And so what you just described is moving from what we would have considered you, which is a level three or level four um, leader, which trust in that situation, you have high trust with just about everybody around you. They know what to expect. They know how to interface with you. They know your strengths. They know the things that that they, you know, need to watch your back for. And then, and then you move into this new role, new position and title, and you're back to a level one leadership. That's what I heard you just say. Is that, would that be accurate? Were there some people who were testing you a little bit in terms of, you know, can we trust you in your new role? Do you have the capacity and the ability to lead the organization the way that Dan had led the organization? Yeah, I would say in those relationships, at some point over the last three years, it went to a level one. You know, just with some of those, it was three years ago at the announcement of the plan. With others, it's, you know, over the course of the three years, you're kind of wrestling with, well, what is our relationship today and what will it be when the transition happens? Um, But I just needed to remain aware that None of that is automatic. It all took work. It all took 
putting things on the table and just having those real conversations mm-hmm. together about how are they feeling? How am I feeling? How do we both get where we want to be down the road in both the relationship and um, in that support for them of leading their teams? That's awesome. So when I think about you've been in this role since January, and I think I want to ask the question, what is it, what does a good day look like since January for you? <laughs> Um, a good day is definitely an on purpose day. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a day where I'm focused on things like casting vision, um, really laying out strategy for the future, or even coaching and helping other leaders rise to their full potential. Like those are the good days. Those are the days that are the reason I wanted the role and the stress that eventually goes with it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, those are the good days for sure. We'll call it the responsibility that goes with it. Okay. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Bigger responsibility. So what is it, it conversely, mm-hmm. like what does a, what has a bad day looked like for you? And I think about some of the challenges mm-hmm. you've had a, mo- a very recent crisis along with many organizations over the past or over the, across our country when the Microsoft CrowdStrike event hit, I think about that crisis and I think about, <laughs> Your leadership, and I'm I'm wondering, you know, was that was, is that one of those bad days, or is that one of those days where you rise up as a leader and really are able to step in and provide that that very important um, role that leaders play in those situations? Yeah, that's you bring up a great recent example of such a day where you walk in the office with a plan of you're going to be on purpose and this is what the day looks like, and then some a dark side event pops up, right? And whether that's a computer issue or whether that's a a relationship that you trusted and all of a sudden you're hit in the face with, I can't trust this relationship or, you know, whatever the event might be, that's just, it's unexpected. It's negative. There's a darkness to it. Mm -hmm. Um, And, uh, you know, in the moment, those things are really hard. Um, You, you kind of immediately go to a place of between what am I going to do or why am I doing this in the first place? Yeah. Um, but what I find is I need to pull myself out of that moment as quickly as possible while not being fake about it, Yeah. but get myself to a place of how will I lead through this thing What are the right things to do? Who are the right people to involve or um, ask for input or advice so that we can get through this as well and quickly as possible and get back on point? Um, And, you know, the hard part is not to let those things change who you are, Mm -hmm. um, but just realize that this is an emotion caused by that event and I just need to get through that and not, not let that make me become something I'm not or not stay in that foul mood that's created instantly for very long. Yeah. I have, I have the pleasure of um, actually coaching some of Greg's team members. And I just, I think of several situations where you have proven yourself over and over and again in those situations to be able to, set the team up for success and they, they certainly have done preparation work as well, but they really appreciate your leadership in those moments and, and helping guide them to stay solution focused, which is what you're describing and, and not letting that challenge or that crisis or that thing really deter the organization from what's on purpose for the organization. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to give you that feedback live here because thank you. It's your team has so much confidence in you in the, you know, your short tenure as CEO and president. And I I already see that they will follow you to the ends of the earth because they trust your your leadership and that consistency that you have, whether it's a good day or a bad day, you're, you're Greg and you, you lead the way that you lead. So. Well, thank you. I would be the first to say there's two parts to that. Number one, they are great people. Yeah. And number two, they have learned that I am very human and that when I make those mistakes, generally I will be the first one to come to them and tell them I really screwed that up. 
at the beginning of that crisis, the way I acted in the beginning or that first decision I was thinking of making or whatever it is. Um, I'm just one that reflects a lot on what just happened and how I handled it. And when I identify that that wasn't what I wanted to have happen, um, I just circle back around and I'm just raw with them and say, Hey, I screwed mm. that up. And I really, I, I need to ask for uh, your forgiveness in how that affected you. Cause clearly I put more stress on you or I snapped and barked at you and you didn't deserve that. And um, so I think to any extent that they trust and follow me, it's the combination of those two things. It's really yeah. who they oh. are and knowing that, when I screw up, which is inevitable and too frequent, right? <laughs> um, but that that's how I will handle it. So. so let's talk about that. Let's talk about what are, what are, so what have been some of the things that you've had to, it, given your tenure, I mean, you've been with the bank 22 years and you've had a lot of experience with this team, a lot of experience within the industry because you didn't start at Stevenson National Bank. You came to Stevenson National Bank as a part of your purpose and being a part of the community bank. So given all of that, like what have been your learnings or, or things that, that you didn't anticipate that you've had to learn through. And I love that you're vulnerable and you're authentic. And yet there's, there's just those moments where you just have to keep pushing through and learn through. And given all of your experience, I'm certain that in the last six months or three years that you've been in, in residence, tra in residence, I'll call it training. Um, yeah. What what have you what have you had to push through and really learn? I think you know. Of course, there's the technical side, right? Any of us, when you're moving into a new role in your field, right? There are technical things you're learning. But I think from the human leadership side of things, it's been that my so my wiring my disc profile is yeah. to be detail oriented and mm. that there is one right answer and if you just analyze enough you'll find that and so i have had to learn when i'm injecting into a situation let's say there's a team and something went wrong and i'm injecting in there to try to help figure out what went wrong and what are we going to do about it my tendency is to stay in that situation too long. So the leader, the teammates will, will huddle together and we'll figure out a solution. And then I tend to, because of my wiring, stay in for the next two steps, like yeah. to make sure it's going the right yeah. direction. And that's one example of where I'm really had to work on. And I've had to apologize more than once to the leader of, hey, I shouldn't have come to the second and third meetings on that subject. You're a great leader. You know this subject way better than I do. Once we agreed on the solution, I should have backed off and let you just take off and run with it. Yeah. Um, so that's, I think that's probably my biggest thing is just recognizing my hard wiring. While it's an asset in a lot of things, it can be a real detriment when I'm dealing with other strong leaders yeah. if I stay in too long. So what are the pivots? Like once you realize it, what are the pivots that you've made? And, and we talk about that from a leadership perspective. Most of us are wired, like you said, a very specific way, you know, dominant or detailed, mm -hmm. you know, driving or, or, you know, and there's a lot of, a lot of strengths that we can pull from that. So what are the pivots knowing that you get, you get like locked in, I'll call it locked in on things like that. What have you done? What are some of the things that you would buy, advise others who are wired like you in those moments when you're learning through that? I think what helps me the most is trying to put myself in that other leader's shoes at that moment and say, you know, when I was in their shoes, what would I have wanted from my leader? Love that. I would have just wanted that moment of touching base to agree on a solution or feel supported as I was making a decision, but yeah. I wouldn't have wanted them to stay in the mix to make sure it happened. Yeah. And so by trying to flip that to where I'm thinking of it through their lens, it helps me reduce those mistakes, so to speak. Yeah. Um, so I think that's that's really the biggest thing is, you know, again, just trying to think. And I think the other thing is, what outcome do I want? 
I really want that other leader to enjoy their role, to get the most out of it, to be the best they can be. And I can achieve that if I back out at the right point and let them do it. I love so. that. I love that you're describing it that way because I also think about trust. And I think about a team who, when you're in all of the details like that, you know, it can send the wrong message to that team member, yep. right? Yep. That you don't trust that they'll be able to make those decisions the way that you would make those decisions. And right. so, you know, with your particular leadership style, I, I would guess that you have to also watch out for perfectionism, that that you don't get to a place where you are looking for that one answer and it has to be perfect and, and you're not allowing your team to grow, learn, and develop as a, as a leader. Yes, you hit it spot on. <laughs> it's like, as though you know me. Uh, <laughs> it's as though I know me. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, uh, one of the little sayings that I keep at the top of my to-do list every day is that perfection is the enemy of excellent. Mm. And I try to remind myself constantly that you know, that all of that time and energy of getting from the 99.9% .9 to the hundred is not what I'm looking for. Yeah. And that certainly in this role, there are so many decisions to be made in the course of a day or a week that it's really an error of staying in that one thing, yeah. trying to get that extra 0.1. Yeah. For too long yeah. because the, the return on that, in the bank, in banking terms, the return on the that return investment is not, is not there. Right. It is just not there. Fred and I have a saying. It's or we have a friend who who shared with us that too much, too much. You, it's not enough juice for the squeeze. There you go. That's what they. That's yep. what they say. So one of the things. Uh, let's talk about. Let's go back to day one, okay. January first of twenty twenty four. You're in your office, first day as CEO and president. What? were some of the things that you experienced in those first days that surprised you that kind of took you off guard that you actually were thinking or, or how the team was behaving on day one. So I told you the story and, and you got a good laugh out of it, but it you know, with a three year on ramp, I was literally sitting in the office next door for much of that three years. And so the physical move is like 10 feet to be in this new office. And I've known for three years that I'm going to be in it. And yet on day one, I walked in and it felt weird. I had this emotion I wasn't expecting of like, this just feels like I went to the wrong office. <laughs> and all day I had to just wrestle with where is this coming from? And it, it, strangely, it was not a doubt about am I in the right role, but it was literally am I in the right physical place? And so just little things like that uh, were very unexpected. And, you know, trying to not let those grow into yeah. something that would be negative or would be dark and take me off purpose. Um, yeah. How long did it take you to adjust to that, to realizing that this is it? I'm here. This is what I've been preparing for. Game day. Let's go. Um, it didn't take long at all, but I'll tell you a neat story that really affirmed it. I had been in the role just a few days and I had the door closed and I was on a video meeting and there was this knock at the door and I tried to ignore the knock and pretty soon the door opens and I had to turn to look and there's this elderly gentleman and he's just walking right in my office in the middle of this video meeting. And so I excused myself from the meeting, put it on hold and I went over to greet him and he says, are you the new bank president? And I said, yes, I am. And he introduced himself and he said, I just needed to meet you because I've known every president here for the 55 years I've banked here. Wow. And he walked out. And, you know, it's just moments like that where it's so real yeah. and you realize like, yeah, I'm, I'm really here. And there's some unique things that go along with this role. Yeah. And yet I, I see that as like symbolic for you from a purpose perspective, right? I mean- mm. That's your, that's your heart and soul. That's your authentic self in terms of connecting with the community and being able to have that individual come up to you and, and just open door policy. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Stevenson. That's right. I'm yeah. the new guy. You're the old, you're the one who's always been here for 55 years. How cool is that? Yeah. That is very cool. So another, 
Another question we have for you, or I have for you, is specifically about as you took on your new role, somebody had to have taken on your role. Hmm. How did that, what were some of the challenges or things that you had to navigate as as you worked with that individual, as they took on your responsibilities and your role? And I'm assuming that was a couple of year, or at least a year transition, because you had big shoes to fill already within the bank. Yeah, right, right. So part of that three-year plan was finding that individual. And we had had all the right conversations inside the organization. And those individuals who would have been qualified to ascend to that role did not choose or want that role. And I really respect them for having identified that they are on purpose in their current role and they didn't want to lose that by moving into a different role. So that meant we had to look outside the organization. And one of the great parts, but one of the most stressful, daunting parts is that I needed to be the one to find that right individual. And so the blessing is I really got to ensure that individual would be the right one. Mm -hmm. And the curse of that was it takes a lot of time and energy and there's a lot of emotion that goes with trying to find that right person. Yes. So... Once we found that person, that's really then when I had to shift modes into, I'm now handing, you know, my team, uh, these people that I really, really have been in the trenches with and work so closely with, and I'm handing them to a new leader and I want him to succeed. And I just had to keep telling myself, I want him to succeed and put his stamp on this way more than I want to protect anything that I thought had my name on it. And so I just, I started by having that conversation with him. I said, I need to say this out loud. You need to hear this from me. This is what I really want. Yeah. I'm human. There's going to be moments where I don't act that way. So yeah. you've got to tell me if I don't identify that I just acted that way. And I'll try to catch it most of the time, but I need you to understand this is really the goal. And um, so It has gone really well, but not without flaws. And most of those are my fault, right? It's those moments where 10 minutes after I left the meeting, it dawns on me, wait, I just acted as though I still lead that team when I was in that room. And that's not the right thing. And so then it's, okay, who do I need to go back and straighten that out with? And, you know, many times it's teammates, not just that leader that I need to go to to say, hey, that wasn't my decision to make. I shouldn't have gone that far in what I was saying and that that's really his decision to make. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's been the rough part. Um, We're blessed. I got an amazing person. The team is great. That's gelled really well. But um, it's making sure I stay out of the way in that regard. Yeah. And you started today uh, talking about. You know, one of the things that I hear you saying is that keeping things, we always talk about two agendas in any meeting, in (laughs) any conversation that you have with somebody, the one is on top of the table, which is the formal agenda, what you're here to talk about. The other one is the under the table agenda. And those are all of the things that people are thinking, um, but not necessarily saying. And so to have that happen and have you (laughs) come back and put it on the table for, for them and with them, I just think about, again, I the feedback that I've received about you and your new role is you're so good about just taking ownership and leading in a way that helps the team get stronger and better. And that requires that level of vulnerability, that level of putting things that have become an under the table agenda on top and doing it as quickly as possible. And so kudos to you and just amazing, amazing as you've stepped into this new role. As we, as we wrap up today, one of the last questions I have for you is, we're, these are, this is about transitions, transitions in your organization. What advisement, um, let's say there's a new leader sitting in front of you taking on a, a new role as CEO or president or a senior leader role. What would be, what have been your, your top three learnings or advisements that you would give to those individuals? The number one thing is you, you have to be able to put everything on the table. Mm-hmm. You are taking over from another leader, so you have to be able to put your concerns or your tough questions on the table with that individual. Yeah. And if they aren't the type you can do that with, 
that's going to be a big struggle for you because you'll inevitably inherit messes um, yes. because of that. Um, so I think that's number one. Um, number two is always err on the side of over communicating versus under communicating. Uh, I, many times I've been faced with a choice of I can take the extra time to circle around and ensure that we're on the same page, or I can assume and I can go home earlier. Yes. And every time that I make the choice to over communicate, it's the right choice. Mm -hmm. And I would much rather hear them say, yeah, you didn't need to stop where we already, I already had that you know, yep. uh, understanding after the meeting or whatever. Um, and yeah, I guess the, the third thing it's, it's so basic, but it's just, you, you have to be you. You, you can't change who you are. You can learn skills. You can improve on things to better execute, better communicate, better um, work through things. You know, there are skills you can learn, but you have to be you. When you're trying to be something different than you, that stress and strain will spill out at the most inopportune moments. So mm. just you just have to be sure you stay who you are while you're learning those new skills. That's great advisement. Great advisement. Greg, thank you so much for being a part of our podcast. And we are so proud of you in the work that you've done at Stevenson National Bank. And as our banking partner, we just, we really, really have appreciated that the work and the effort of your team and you, and um, just admire your transition as you've, stepped into the CEO role. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's uh, all the things we've learned from initiative one have been amazing assets to us in this transition. And uh, you know, the biggest of which are the trust accelerators without yeah. that, I'm not sure how we would have achieved the level that we've achieved because just you have to have those fundamental things that you um, work through as a team and those agreed upon ways of conducting yourselves. Thanks so much for watching today. We really appreciate you and so glad you could join us today on Leadership Initiative Podcast. Please feel free to like us, watch us on Spotify or Apple, and thanks so much for being here.